It is important to emphasize that NFPA 13D requires that the water supply for a sprinkler system is only required to accommodate one or two operating sprinklers for a period of seven to 10 minutes. The water demand is not significant on a municipal water system. Most of the time, and I'm talking way up there in the 80s and 90% of the time, uh, only one head goes off because it then sprinkles down on the source of the fire and keeps it in check. So sizing for two is logical and only one's probably going to go off. In terms of the water demand, there's no impact of sprinkler systems on water demand. When the sprinkler systems go off, in, in most cases, it wouldn't affect the system at all. In most cases, the flow is between 15 gallons to 25 gallons per minute. Um, nothing more than what you'd see on the fixture count of uh, an average home. That allows us to tie it into the domestic system and really make it an extension of the existing plumbing system in the home. The connection includes a single supply from the water main to the house. It's also less cost to the builder to have a single line. Uh, it's probably just a more efficient design also. And in having this single line system, you really have now what is just an extension of the domestic water supply. Once inside the house, for standalone systems, the water delivery is split so that the domestic system is isolated from the fire sprinkler system. In areas like the Midwest, where homes are built with basements, the riser is typically located in the basement. In areas like California and many western states, where homes are built without basements, the riser is located in the garage. Under 13D for a standalone system, it is preferred that a water meter is not installed on the sprinkler line because the meter could produce friction or blockage or reduce water pressure. In the many jurisdictions where meters are required on standalone systems, the meter is placed before the split between the domestic and sprinkler lines. In these cases, the meter must be included in the hydraulic calculations for the sprinkler system. Obviously, in the case of combined multi-purpose domestic fire protection water lines, the lines will be metered. A typical sprinkler system should be designed so that water flow is at least 15 gallons per minute and up to a maximum of 40 gallons per minute. Backflow preventers are not required by NFPA 13D, but may be required by local code. Where required, backflow preventers and meters must be considered in hydraulic calculations. Many jurisdictions have settled on a different method of maintaining good water quality. In Philadelphia, we have a provision in that residential fire systems that are uh, supplying dedicated sprinkler heads have to have a connection from the sprinkler system to the toilet tank that's furthest from the water supply in the building. Thus, every time that toilet is flushed, it draws water through the fire line and keeps the water fresh in that line. Therefore, there's no need for any type of backflow prevention. In areas where homes are built without a municipal water supply or there is insufficient water pressure from the main, options include utilizing the home's well system. If the well alone does not have adequate pressure, a pump may be required. A tank and pump may be used on standalone systems. The pump is off until a fire causes a sprinkler to activate, when the pump will automatically turn on to provide the required water flow. A final option, a pressurized tank system, stores water under pressure, which is maintained by an external source, such as a nitrogen bottle. These are used when the power supply is unreliable. Because the focus of NFPA 13D is life safety, the standard does not require sprinklers in all areas of a dwelling. Sprinklers may be omitted from small bathrooms and closets. Sprinklers are not required in garages, open attached porches, or attics that are not used for living space. However, some jurisdictions do require sprinklers in those areas.